Good morning. This is Pastor Rick from New Sharon United Methodist Church. Once again, we're meeting, well, we're alone here, and we're in our sanctuary. I just can't wait until we're back to worshiping together, but we're not right now, so Jeannie is a good 10 feet away from me, running the phone, and hopefully in a few weeks we'll have the system set up a little better so I can have a mic so you can probably hear me better. But for now, this is how we're going to do it, and I hope you can hear well. If you can't, well, I'll try to talk louder. But then Jeannie has to close her ear, hold her ears, so. But good morning, we're glad to be here this morning with you, and we're celebrating today. Um, this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're meeting, well, we're at home, we're at different places. Jeannie and I are here in the sanctuary. It's really windy outside, but this is a time where we can come and fellowship together, even though we're in our homes and in different places. One thing I would like to ask you is to practice safety with our health, and uh, that means washing our hands, uh, staying a good six feet away from each other, don't go anywhere you don't have to go. This is a time where we want to get rid of this virus and not let it take over as it has. We just, Debbie and I just came home from Colorado yesterday in the interstates, Interstate 70 and Interstate 80. I don't know, it's been a long time since I've ever seen both interstates as dead as they were. Trucks, trucks were really going, but as for cars, there weren't very many, so. It's a, it's a different world right now, but you know what? God has control, and he knows exactly what's going on. And the best thing is, is he knows our hearts, and we can go to him. So let's begin here today with a prayer, and then we'll go to our scripture. Today we're going to be talking about blood, sweat, and tears, since two weeks from today is Easter, and the way it sounds, we probably will not be meeting together, so... Oh, it's a time where we're going to reach out, though, to each other via email, uh, messaging, text, on the phone. We can talk to each other, but keep everybody in the loop, and we'll be doing more um, videos, hopefully do a couple, three more videos this week, just to keep everybody up to date and together as a congregation, because this is a time where we shine. We are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, and this is, this is when we should be really excited that we can, we can do that in so many different ways. There are so many people hurting right now and scared and in fear, and this is when we can let Jesus do his work through us. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we come to you today, and we're sitting in our homes Jeannie and I are here in the church, and it's echoing because it's empty. Oh, Lord, this place here where we're at today was meant to be filled with your children and those who love you and those who even don't know who you are but are searching for you. And we just ask you, Lord, that we are your hands and feet now more than ever so that those who are so searching and in great fear right now can come to us and see you shining through us. Lord, shine like you've never shone before and help us to let you shine through us. Have this day be the light of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Right now I'm sitting, but I won't be sitting very long. But um, we're, we're in here and it's, it's quiet and it's windy outside and you can just hear the roof creaking every once in a while and, and it's just kind of, kind of strange. But uh, every once, if I happen to look up and um, at some time, it's because the wind just gusted and the roof is creaking. But, so today, this is uh, the 29th of March. Easter's the 12th of April, and 
And so today we're going to be looking at the blood, sweat, and tears of Jesus Christ. I'm making Jeannie nervous now because um, she thinks I'm going to stand up, which I am. But uh, first I'll read the scripture and, and then I'll get up. But, oh, yeah, in two weeks it's Easter Sunday, the day that Jesus Christ is alive. And more, boy, do we need that more than ever right now. Jesus Christ is alive. Never, ever forget that. He knows exactly what we're going through. So, so the first um, Bible reading today, our first scripture from the Old Testament is Psalm 6. So let us, let us hear the word of God. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord? How long? Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Among the dead, no one proclaims your name. Who praises you from the grave? I am worn out from my groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil. For the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be overwhelmed with shame and anguish. They will turn back and suddenly be put to shame. Oh. If you're feeling down at different times, go to the Psalms and you'll hear what David and the other Psalm writers went through in their lives. They went through agony. They went through defeat. They went through fear. They went through doubt, just like we do. But who did they come back to? They came back to God. Why? Because he never leaves us nor forsakes us. He's always with us. We're going through a lot right now. Many people are really suffering. Not only physically, but emotionally and mentally and, and financially. And this is a time where people are seeking, and people are going to be seeking God more and more here at this time and in this place than ever before. Why? Because of fear, because of doubt, because too many in this world don't know the surety, the truth, the sovereignty of God. And through Jesus Christ, what he has given us. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is the blood, sweat, and tears of Jesus Christ. He gave it all to save us all. And so this <clears throat> is our gospel reading from Matthew 26, 36 through 46. Let us hear the word of God again. Then Jesus went to his disciples, with his disciples, to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul was overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter? Watch and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, May your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. 
Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. And this is the word, the living word of God. Let us rejoice in it. So, yeah, I'm going to stand up, Jimmy. <clears throat> So the blood, sweat, and tears of Jesus Christ. And he gave it all to us to save us all. And that night, the night before he was going to give his life up willingly for us, let me tell you, he did this willingly. If, if he wouldn't have wanted to do this, he wouldn't have. But he gave everything he was. His lordship. His divinity. He's God. And he came to this earth so he could live as one of us, so he, that he could be our sacrifice. Instead of us paying for our sins, for our debts, which we never could, ever. Jesus came as God to live on this earth so that someday we will be able to spend eternity with him in the most wonderful place we could never even imagine, where God dwells, where God's presence is everywhere. And that's where we will be. But it took a sacrifice, and that sacrifice was Jesus Christ on the cross. His blood shed for us. That is a gift that we, we do not understand how wonderful that gift is and how great the gift was. At this day, March 29, 2020, where the world seems to be falling apart at the seams, God has everyone in his hands. All we have to do is give our lives totally to him because of the blood, sweat, and tears that uh, Jesus gave up for us. Now, well, Jeannie probably doesn't remember, but there was a a rock group called Blood, Sweat, and Tears back in, I think it was late 60s, early 70s. Yeah, Jeannie's shaking her head, so. But um, they had some really famous songs, but uh, the real blood, sweat, and tears comes from Jesus Christ. And I don't know, maybe that's where they got their name from. But. So we're, right now, we're going to look at suffering a little bit, but we're going to look at this scripture, too. This is Luke 22. 39 through 46. Jesus left the city and went, as he usually did, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples went with him. When they arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. Then he went off from them about a distance of a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, he said, if you will take this cup of suffering away from me, not my will, however, but your will be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. In great anguish he prayed even more fervently. His sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Rising from his prayer, he went back to the disciples and found them asleep, worn out by their grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you will not fall into temptation. Word of God. So, Jesus was going through a time of anguish in his life that he could not imagine. Well, he could imagine. He knew exactly what he was going through. We could not imagine what Jesus was suffering at this time where he was telling himself, I don't really want to go through this, but for the sake 
of my children I'm going to. He was suffering so great that when he was praying, he was sweating drops of blood. He was suffering in this time so drastically that everything in his body was changing. He knew what was coming. But he also knew the benefits that would come along with his suffering. Benefits of suffering. And you can talk about a lot of people right now who are going through suffering. And let me tell you, at the time, it doesn't seem there's going to be any benefits whatsoever. And sometimes it feels like it's never going to end. But there are benefits from suffering. We see Jesus' suffering on the cross. What a benefit that is for us now. But we have to remember that everyone suffers because of sin. You know, I've, I've heard this so much over the last few weeks since um, this COVID-19 thing has been going on. And I've read it and I've heard it. I've seen it in different places. It's why would God allow such a thing to happen? Why, if, he's, if he can take care of everything, why would he allow this to happen? Well, hmm. he allows this to happen because we think we're in control. We, as human beings, have fallen. Sin came into this world. God didn't put the sin here. We ourselves put the sin into this world. Sin is what causes suffering. Sin is what causes the diseases and all of the things that are catastrophic to this world to happen. It's sin that has caused this. We are suffering because of sin. That came from Adam and Eve. Why? It came from Adam and Eve because the devil tempted them. And they thought, hey, you know, let's be in control. Let's take control of our lives. And how did that happen to work for every one of us now? God weeps when he sees what is going on in this world. Look at what has happened in this world because of sin. Things in our country were going so well, so great. And what happened? In our country especially, we had forgotten. Most of society had forgotten who rules the world. God rules, but he lets sin take control because that is what we wanted. He doesn't want it to happen in our lives. The devil has control of this world. God rules everything, but we chose to be our own boss. And now this is what has happened. We became so arrogant in our society. We didn't need anything anymore from God, we felt. Nothing's going to take away our money. Nothing's going to take away our health. Nothing's going to take away our lives. And in a month, the world has changed. People who have millions and millions and billions of dollars, some of them have lost all of it. They said, I read an article, I think it was yesterday or the day before, that in the United States, over 500,000 people who were millionaires aren't anymore. And it happened in three weeks. We are not in control and we suffer because of sin. We suffer because we want to run our lives. And we put God in the background. Everyone suffers because of sin. No one enjoys suffering. But you know what? God is so gracious. God is so wonderful that he takes 
suffering and uses it to instruct us in our lives. He uses that to instruct us. And that is what we do through suffering. We're instructed, we learn, we become a different person. That's one of the benefits of suffering. There are lessons that we would never learn in any other way. That is what is happening right now. People in this world, the whole world, has pretty much come to a stop. And there are lessons that we are learning through this time that we could never learn if we weren't suffering. This is a time when, if churches were open, churches would be completely filled. Because people have lost their security. They've lost what they thought was their rock in their life. And they're still searching for something. And that's when we shine. As the church of Jesus Christ, as the body of Christ, we shine. Because we are learning things that we could not learn in any other way. Sometimes, suffering is the only way God can prompt us to obey. You know, we were flying, I've heard this so much, that the economy was the best economy that we've had for so long. And everything was flying along so great. And you could just hear people saying that, hey, there's nothing going to stop us. Nothing. You know, this is the best we've ever been. And there is no stopping, oh, you want to bet. Two months ago, no one could have imagined what has happened. No one could imagine that malls would be closed, that businesses, restaurants, that you wouldn't go out to eat, that you couldn't do anything in a lot of cities where you are at stay-at-home orders, that you cannot go anywhere unless you're getting groceries or something you need. Two months ago, we couldn't imagine that. And now we're living it. We were in the best. We were the best. And now, where are we? It's not the fault of God. It's our fault. The arrogance of us thinking that nothing is going to take place that could ever destroy us. 2020 was going to be the best year ever for most businesses and most people. Wealth was growing like crazy. Most people were richer than they'd ever been in their lives, but there were people who were poorer than they'd ever been in their lives, too. And did we care? Or did we care about ourselves? In two months, we are now sitting in our homes, watching television, playing games, not going anywhere. Things change so quickly. Most of us would not have wanted this to happen. But we have no power to stop it. Who's in control? God is in control. But he also lets us dig our own holes many times. And then he takes what has happened in our lives. He takes that and uses that to obey him. So we come back to him. Even though it's our own fault, he still draws us back to him. What has happened isn't God's fault. It's because of sin. It's because of the arrogance that we have had. And now, so many who had left God are coming back. Because they realize that the only thing that will never change is Jesus Christ. God on earth. God incarnate. Emmanuel. The Messiah. 
He never changes. Suffering may also strip away distractions that hinder us from the deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. Right during this time, he's taking away all of the things that have drawn us away from him. He takes that. He takes money. He takes the things. He takes our jobs. He takes our who we are. And it's gone. We have nothing left lots of times. So what happens? We become closer and closer to Jesus Christ through this time. So the response is to suffering. As long as we remain on this earth, there will be pain and trouble. As long as we remain here on this earth, there will be pain. And there will be trouble. We all know that. Whoever's lived has had trouble. In times of suffering, lots of times it's tough to pray when we're suffering. Especially when the time where we think it's never going to end. But we need to pray. But that's when lots of times we struggle with prayer. But when you struggle with prayer, pray, Lord, I can't pray right now. Help me. Give me the power to pray, Lord. I need you. And different from Jesus Christ's struggles, ours often involve unwillingness to obey God. Jesus Christ willingly obey God. Not my will, but your will be done. But during this time, our response is so important. We need to obey God's will for our lives. Say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. We can't, ex we can't escape the pain. We can't expect or escape the adversity. But we can choose how to respond to it. We can choose how to respond to the adversity that is going on in this world right now. And we take that. We take that adversity and we let Christ shine through us, even though we're hurting too. We pray, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. We yield to his will. We give up ours to his. And he will give us the grace to endure through times of struggle and pain and times where we think, can we go on? And he will give us the grace and the strength to grow into Christ-likeness, into the image of Jesus Christ. We are to be growing into the likeness of Jesus Christ. So, in Matthew 26, 37, what, what was happening at that moment? What was happening? So it began in this uh, scripture, Matthew 26, 37. Began means that Jesus saw something while he was praying, something he hadn't experienced until that point. When Jesus was praying, it was something he, he saw something that made him sweat so hard. They sweat blood. Now, the word translated sorrowful is a very, very strong Greek word. It actually means horrified. Horrified. And when you couple it with trouble, it's a thing that he was experiencing that, experiencing that made him sweat so hard. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus saw something so horrifying, he almost died under the strain. When he was praying, he saw something so horrible that he almost died at that time. What he saw was his separation from God. Luke says that what Jesus saw caused him such strain that he literally began to sweat drops of blood. For the first time in eternity, the Father was silent. God the Father was not answering Jesus. He was praying, but God was not answering. And then Jesus goes back to his disciples, and what are they doing? They're sleeping. 
They're sleeping. Can you believe it? They're sleeping. He goes back. Now, William Lane, a New Testament scholar, says that here in Gethsemane, God had already begun to turn his face away. The judgment for our sin had already begun before the first nail was driven into Jesus' body. God had already began to turn his face away from Jesus. Jesus Christ's soul had been abandoned by God. He had been abandoned by God at that time, and somehow, in that one moment, Jesus glimpsed an eternity in hell for us. Folks, we don't know what hell, what hell is. We know what hail is. It's those round ice things that uh, hit very hard during the thunderstorm. But we don't know what hell is. But Jesus at one time, during this time, glimpsed what hell is, and that's the absence, absence of God. And he glimpsed eternity. It's a complete abandonment by God. Right now, God is holding the evil that is in this world. Because if he would let it go, we wouldn't believe what would be, what would be happening. Jesus looked full into the cup of God's wrath. It stunned him so badly that it almost killed him. He prayed three times, Father, if there is, no, if there is any other way, take this, take this cup from me. If there's any way, but not my will. Okay. The light just exploded. But not my will, but yours be done. Father, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. But that cup was presented to us. Jesus stepped in the way. It was our cup that he took. It was ours. It was our sin. He never sinned. And Jesus Christ stepped in and owned it for us and said, It is finished. What had been set before him in that moment? What did Jesus see that he was going to obtain that made the cross worth it? What did Jesus see at that time? What did Jesus not have on that side of the cross that he would have on this side? What was set before Jesus Christ at that moment? There's only one thing that was set on that side, and that is you and me. Jesus did what he did, gave up his divinity, his sovereignty as God, came down to this earth to live a life as a human in this sinful, horrible, terrible, wonderful world. He came here, lived among us, knowing how our life was. He suffered for us, knowing how we suffer. He died for us, knowing how we die. But folks, he rose again. In two weeks, we're going to be celebrating. He rose again. He did this blood, sweat, and tears. He gave it all for you and me. Everything he was, he gave up for us. And in this time, right now, is when we can live and shine the light of Jesus Christ. Let him shine through our lives because people are searching now more than they have in years. We are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. He lived and died and rose again for each one of us. There's only one thing that Jesus Christ saw during his suffering at that time, and that was you and me. Shine his light this week every way you can. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just come to you today this is a strange time in the world. But you knew it was coming. 
and you knew you needed to bring us back together as your body. Even though we are apart, Lord, we are coming closer together. We can't meet together, but we are coming closer together. And let us be your hands and feet. This week, help us be the light of Jesus Christ. The city on the hill that so many people are looking for right now. Work through us this week, Lord. And help us be who you want us to be. Shine the light of Jesus Christ. In your name we pray. Amen. Have a great week, everybody. And be safe. And be good. For you little ones, if you're still listening, be nice to mommy and dad. Okay? Shine the light of Jesus Christ this week. Have a great week, everybody.